Kia ora, Kathy. It's really good to talk to you today. Um, hi, everyone. Kathy is a sustainability field worker for the diocese, and so we're doing a little catch up uh, by a, a recorded Zoom meeting today. Uh, Kathy, how's things going in your little bubble? Yep, yep. Uh, doing well. Glad that playgrounds are open. That's always helpful. I reckon when you're managing a small child, it must be essential. We've had so much focus on COVID and vaccination and all of that, but the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, um, begins in just over a week. And uh, that's, uh, in fact, I think in a week's time, and that, that's very important uh, as well. What are you thinking about that? What's key for you out of that conference? Yeah, um, so COP26 is uh, the first climate UN climate conference after the Paris Agreement was signed in about six years ago, where countries are coming um, and actually demonstrating what are the plans um, that we have in place, uh, how we're going to up our uh, emission reduction to meet the 1.5 degree safe mark. Uh, so this, this is a really significant international um, conference where, where I guess the, 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 um, the time it's a rubber and we're really wanting and hoping for some tangible commitment and some big steps up um, both from our government and also internationally. Yeah um, I think it's a wonderful thing that um, interfaith leaders and uh, I was able to sign the statement as well um, have prepared a statement and that was presented last week in Wellington to climate change minister James Shaw who will be attending the conference in Glasgow. And that, that just both made a commitment and also set uh, a, a wero for our government about where we think uh, uh, the messaging that should be being taken to Glasgow. What, what for you were the key things out of that statement? Yeah, I mean, obviously the big one is um, an ask for New Zealand to increase our nationally determined contribution. It's called NDC. Uh, this is how much carbon emission we're going to reduce as a country um, in order to make sure we only increase, our, um, you know, limit our global warming to 1.5 degrees. Um, and the uh, religious diversity centre with all the interfaith groups have asked for us to uh, aim for at least 50% reduction by 2030 and to achieve net zero by 2050. Um, as faith communities, we're not only concerned about, you know, hitting a particular target. There's also a huge concern for how that transition is done. Uh, there's concern for the impacts of if we don't meet our obligation and keep warming to 1.5 degrees. So uh, as religious communities, we're asking for uh, Aotearoa New Zealand to involve a diversity of voices to this conversation, a respect to Tereti, um, uh, and and ensuring that people who are most vulnerable, um, both to the impacts of climate change, but also people who are working in industries that are vulnerable if we are to shift to a low carbon economy, are taken care of and thought about and, um, and have an option um, in this process. Uh, as, um, as a country, we, you know, we talk about compassion um, and we talk about how in COVID we are meeting this crisis Either. And this is similar as well with climate change and, and the potential impact it has for our communities uh, and our closest neighbour, the Pacific in particular, as well. I know there are going to be some prayer vigils held internationally around the Climate Change Conference, 31st of October, and I think it finishes on the 12th of November or something like that. Um, Kathy, there's some happening here as well. How can people take part in those and, and other other ways that people can be involved in all of this? Yeah, so um, a group of us um, kind of from across Aotearoa, uh, from ecumenical backgrounds, um, are working on this um, uh, vigil for COP26 under the Karakia for Our Climate banner. I just and the diocese have collaborated with Karakia for Our Climate before to participate in um, climate strike and, and ensuring that prayer and karakia is a huge part of our involvement in this space. Um, so obviously with COVID restrictions, uh, most of our vigil will be happening online. So on the 31st of October, we are um, having a uh, our first prayer service via Zoom. Um, and we're going to be talking with Rod Oren. He's actually the only New Zealand journalist. Yeah, he got there, eh? Yeah, who's actually in 
Glasgow. So we're really privileged to have him share a little bit about what it's been like. Um, and we'll also be, yeah, just um, kicking off our vigil together uh, throughout the week from the 1st of November to the 11th of November. We'll be having um, evening prayer similar to daily offices held on the Karakia for Our Climate Facebook group page. Um, and that's also where you can find the link to the Zoom meeting as well. Uh, and in other parts of the country, people are meeting in person to conclude um, the, uh, the vigil on the 12th of November. Unfortunately, in Auckland, uh, we'll probably have to do that by Zoom or um, some sort of virtual um, press service instead. It's also the day of the last day of Synod as well. Um, so hopefully we can um, have some space to be able to creatively pray together um, on the kind of the last day of COP where big decisions are being made um, and commitments are kind of having to be set in on paper. So yeah, um, that's that's one way to get involved. Uh, another way is currently there is uh, a consultation process for the government's emission reduction plan. Uh, if you agree with the statement that um, the Religious Diversity Centre and the group of the interfaith groups have come together to write, feel free to you know just send that through to um, the to the consultation process. Um, you can find a link to the uh, statement. Yeah, we'll put up some links for people uh, at the end of the video so that they can find their way to all the things yeah, awesome. that you've been talking about. Hi. Hey, Kathy, yeah. thank, you, um, thank you for chatting briefly about all this really important. So I wanted to be able to highlight it for people um, to have it in their prayers and those action points as the conference begins next week. Look after yourself and your bubble. Cool. Kia ora. Thanks. Hi. Ka kite. Ka kite.